So welcome. The first meditation practice that I want to begin with is called um, insight meditation, uh, or in the Buddhist tradition, it's called Vipassana meditation. And this is a very specific meditation practice, so I'll walk you through it if you've never done this before. Um, and it's really about sort of trying to get really clear with what is happening for you in the moment, um, whatever that may be. So we're going to invite ourselves to feel whatever emotions we are having, feel what, you know, think, like recognize any thoughts that are coming along. I'd really try to center that in the body um, and get a clear understanding of sort of where that um, experience resides, if you will, in the body so that we can get really, really familiar with it. And sometimes when you do this kind of a practice, for me anyway, um, it's really just about sort of downloading all the stuff that I ignore. <laughs> so I really get to feel each emotion and I really get to feel, um, just really just be present for whatever it is that's unfolding in my life right in this moment. And sometimes that's really pleasant and sometimes it's a little more challenging. And then other times what happens is when I practice that, I get a little bit of insight. So that's hence the name, which is that sort of I understand a little bit more about myself, a little bit more about um, the things that sort of um, bother me or the ways that I sort of shape or um, make choices in my life that maybe are it for the benefit or not. So it gives me a way to sort of check in with myself and hold myself accountable a little bit. So that's the first part. So that's sort of like the clearing out the old, if you will, aspect of this New Year's practice which is just to allow ourselves to be kind of really clear about what has um, gone down for our, us over the past year and yeah, whatever might be going on right now. And then the second part of the meditation practice is gonna kind of be a hybrid of a visualization and a loving kindness practice. And if you've never done either of those, um, I'm gonna guide us through a visualization where we sort of look at loving kindness directed towards ourselves. And then we'll take that and um, uh, uh, kind of forge that into a more traditional loving kindness practice where we sort of direct kindness and compassion outward. So that's the meditation section. And then we'll take like a little break uh, and then set up for uh, a yoga practice. And we'll do sort of a yin yang practice, some slower poses, some flowing, um, things that aren't too strenuous, but just kind of get us moving. And you can move in intuitive ways along that way um, as well. And then we'll do Shavasana, which hopefully will take us right to that midnight point. And then I'll invite you to uh, participate in an Irish tradition where you fling open your front door <laughs> after Shavasana. You fling open your front door to say goodbye to the old year and then cross the threshold, turn around. And if you're up for it, throw like money <laughs> or just intentions for the year into the house and then you step through the threshold again to uh, say um, hello to the new year so well I'll offer you that option um, which you can take or leave uh, and then maybe you have something you want to do a little toast we'll toast the end of the new year I've got uh, some coffee I've got some cherry pop <laughs> and I've got a bottle of Prosecco in my fridge so I'll figure out and, and some tea on the stove I'll figure out which of those seems like the better option. So you can too, if you want to toast with water or just your own intentions. So does anybody have any concerns about my agenda for the evening? I'm gonna take that as a no. <laughs> if you have any questions or any thoughts along the way, you can interject. Um, and certainly ask questions. Uh, we're here live together, so that's really the important part. So the first part of meditating is to get comfortable. Now with Vipassana meditation, which is a different approach to meditation than the single pointed focus one, which is the more common meditation training, which is just to stay present with your breath, stay present with your breath, stay present with your breath. Um, in that case, generally, you want to be relatively physically still. But with Vipassana meditation, that's not necessarily important. So if you feel like you need to move around a little bit, if you want to get up and walk um, or lie down or anything, you can move your body as long as you just 
stay present with what's happening. It's a very specific um, setup to the practice, which starts the way most meditation practices do, <laughs> which is to say that we arrive in the present moment. So find yourself in a comfortable position. Now I've got a cushion underneath my hips, which puts my hips a little higher than my knees. I find that more comfortable. I've also got a nice thick blanket underneath my ankle joint, so that that is really comfy. And along the way, if I need to, I'll straighten out my legs or adjust myself um, in, on or off the pillow. But mostly my spine is holding itself up and I can relax my shoulders. And then along the way, you may find that you can invite yourself to do different arm positions. My favorite generally is just to rest my palms um, on my knees. This is called the mudra of calm abiding. But if you feel a sort of intuitive sense that uh, maybe bringing a finger and the thumb together or bringing one hand, like, you know, kind of resting one palm inside the other in your lap would be better, you can change the hands and see what happens. So start with your environment and just take in the environment around you. You can do that with your eyes open or closed. Welcome your environment into your present moment experience. There might be things like, you know, my little pets or um, your pets or kids that might occasionally wander through. We just are allowing our environment to be part of our practice and it might distract us temporarily and then we just come back. And there might be, you know, sounds outside or whatever, <laughs> depending on how wild your neighbors are as we go along. Oh, so we'll just welcome the environment to be here. And if we get ourselves, if we find ourselves kind of going down a, a road where we pay attention and try to figure things out that are happening around us, we just come back to the pose and the breath and the thing that we're doing right in that moment. And then decide whether you like your eyes open more or closed. Usually for me, it's easier to focus if my eyes are closed, but if I start to get sleepy, I might open them just a little bit. And then feel your body settled into place, make adjustments as you need to. Again, you might need to make adjustments immediately or maybe just as we go. The body is part of the practice. It's part of who we are. <laughs> Without it, we, I don't know, we might be a crystal on Venus or something. It's hard to know. <laughs> what our role, uh, our particular role would be without this body that we're in. But it is the tool that we use for yoga practice and for this meditation. So the meditation starts with our mind getting present right here. Noticing the breath for a moment just to anchor our attention in the present moment. And the breath is always a tether. So if we find ourselves um, starting to craft stories or we find ourselves um, going, you know, down little thought pathways away from the present experience, then the breath is the way that we come back home. So we just pause all of the thoughts that we were just doing, come back to the breath, notice the breath right here in this moment. Now, if you don't like to notice your breath for whatever reason, some people feel a little bit breathless or a little bit um, constricted when they notice their breath, that you can come back to noticing the environment or noticing um, the way, you know, the sensation of the body sitting on the floor, on a chair, whatever you're sitting on. All right, so just come back to being present in one of those places that we've already explored. Now we're going to start with a little scan of the body. And so starting at the top of the head, we're just going to pay attention to the body parts. And, and I just go from the top of my head, just kind of work my way down. And we're looking for um, any um, muscle tension or gripping or contraction that we don't need to hold ourselves in place. So we're just relaxing maybe around the temples or the eyes and the muscles across the forehead. And one of the ways that I like to, or the thought that I like to put in my head is, can I make my eyes kinder so that I'm bringing to my practice for myself a sense of kindness, acceptance, 
as well as presence. I'm looking at myself with kindness. Notice any tension that might reside around the teeth or the jaw. Can you let the teeth part a bit? Let the jaw relax, let the lips soften. So that there's just a sense of kind of almost a little smile or just a little fluffiness to the mouth, the lips. So just really soft there. And then you can travel sort of down the muscles of the neck and sometimes I find while I'm doing this little scan that like a little muscle that's a little tighter on the right side than the left. Right? So I may invite that right side just to relax a little bit and see if I can find the most kind of stable even place. And similarly, just going down the shoulders, the chest muscles, maybe the arms need a little attention. Notice any tension that you might have in your hands. And let the fingers find a way to relax. Again, one of those little mudras might be just the right ticket for tonight. Touching the thumb and finger together, um, index finger together, or letting the palms rest. <laughs> and then I like to notice kind of my belly a little bit. Just, is there any gripping around the abdominal muscles or between my rib cage and my hips? Is there any discomfort in my low back that I should address? Make sure that the hips feel like they're relatively stable so you're not falling off your seat. And then notice that legs and again, if the legs start to feel like if your feet fall asleep or if the legs just start to feel uncomfortable, your knees, anything like that, you can add support padding or you can just change your position. Now, sometimes when I do this practice, nothing happens <laughs> because there's no issues going on. There's no emotions I haven't been letting myself kind of touch into. There's you know, nothing's going on. But Sometimes, uh, especially during stressful times, I find this practice very um, intense. So um, there's a lot of emotions. So it depends on what's happening in your life. But allow yourself with your body in a calm and relatively stable place. Can you invite um, your mind or your emotions to just allow you to feel whatever um, is coming up? So whether that's joy or it's something a little more um, tricky or troublesome. So what feelings are present here in this moment right now? And then if one comes up, where do you feel that in your body? So emotions always, at least for me, create a sensation. So lately, <laughs> there's been a lot of anxiety. You know, that's the word I'm gonna use to name the emotion. You can name your emotions as you like. And that, I always feel the sensation of that in my um, lower um, stomach, just above my navel. And often there's a kind of um, sense of sort of the holding or gripping around the navel. Like I'm trying to hold, you know, zip up a tight pair of pants. <laughs> and can I just allow myself to sit with that sensation and see what happens? So the approach is to get curious um, and willing to uh, allow whatever shows up to be present here today whatever those emotions are. And 
feel where they land in the body. And as you make space for yourself to feel that sensation, what happens? So usually for me, and it doesn't happen automatically, but usually for me, eventually what happens is that area of my body shifts and there is a softening or kind of dissipating It's almost as if that emotion just needed me to know that it was there. See if that's true for you as well. And then you ask yourself, is there anything else here? Is there any other emotion that wants to, <laughs> that I'm noticing or that I'm feeling or that's been in my experience lately that I've been setting aside to get things done. Not letting myself feel because they're difficult. Or not letting myself feel because I feel guilty. Maybe we haven't let ourselves feel joy because someone else in our life isn't feeling joyful right now. Right? Can we allow any emotion to come in? Notice where it lands in the body, like where do you feel it? Get kind of curious. Watch what happens as you let yourself feel that emotion. And that might be all that happens, or maybe it dissipates a little bit, it lightens, things change. And you see what else is going on. Now, sometimes there's a tendency when we're in the process here to start to create stories about why we feel that emotion or to um, link it to things or analyze it, try to avoid that. You can do that later <laughs> if you want to, but for the purposes of what we're up to with this meditation practice is we're trying to just stay present and creating stories or analyzing things takes us away from just feeling. So if you catch yourself doing that, see if you can just come back to the physical place where you notice that. And just let yourself sit with it. Don't be scared if things come up, if there are um, laughter or tears or whatever. If that comes up, just let it come. that almost always follows anxiety, the thing that's almost always at the very root of it is fear, which is tricky. <laughs> Being afraid is not that much fun. But can I let myself just be present with it? Just give it space to exist here in my experience, because it is part of the human experience, each and every emotion we have. The one I probably like the least is embarrassment. That one <laughs> shows up sometimes, <laughs> which might happen later on after this, but there you have it. <laughs> so just sit with whatever arises and then let it go and invite yourself to come back to your experience. And again, if you need to move, do so. We're gonna stay for about another five minutes or so. Now, sometimes this gets really complicated and there have been times in my life where I've sat with this meditation practice for many hours, um, working to unwind everything. 
Um, we're not going to do that tonight, but know that that's something that you could do on your own if this practice is meaningful to you. Usually if I allow myself to just feel whatever emotions pop up for whatever, on whatever given day there is, there's a sense at the end of the practice of kind of spacious, gentle presence. I'm just integrating the whatever's coming up for me on a given day. Just make space. See if that's true for you. Remember to look at yourself with kindness. Allow yourself to just kind of use this as a clearing process. And be gentle with yourself. Here just for about another minute. If your mind was off wandering, mine was following the exploits of these tiny creatures in my environment, so I'm just bringing myself back. <laughs> this kind of house clearing <laughs> uh, insight meditation into a, a variation of a loving kindness meditation. We're going to start with a visualization. So if you need to move your body first, go ahead and just move your body around a little bit. Kind of shake out the um, kinks. Now, loving kindness meditation, also referred to as meta or as mayatri meditation, depending on the uh, language, <laughs> whether you're using Sanskrit or the uh, language that the Buddha spoke, which was Pali, um, is uh, 
a really traditional practice. And this is one where we invite, um, we invoke blessings on ourselves and on others, right? And we go, it's a pretty um, structured process. Now we're gonna come to that eventually, but we're gonna start <laughs> with this notion of um, inviting blessings to ourselves. And so the first, the, the, everybody has slightly different variations on this, but generally speaking, there are four blessings um, that are used in this process. And the ones that I use are, uh, may I be happy? And so take a moment and just say that blessing to yourself. May I be happy? And this is, uh, these are blessings that we're giving ourselves for the new year. May I be happy? And then may I be healthy? Wish yourself the blessing, may I be healthy. You can say them out loud or you can say them to yourself in your mind. May I be free of fear. <laughs> may I be free of fear. It's the next blessing. And may I be at peace. So those are the traditional ones, if that's the right word, at least my variation of them. But now you're going to come up with some personal blessings for yourself. Like, may I be joyful. <laughs> may I try to live with grace. <laughs> may I accept life with grace. <laughs> may I be uh, fearless. May I be creative. Like, come up with your own blessings. May I be resilient. If you like the ones I've had, you can have them too. I'm, <laughs> I'm willing to share. But think about your own for a few moments and just bless yourself. Say those things to yourself. May I be. And then something that you want to bring into your life in the new year. We can't always control the things that happen. Never in a million years last New Year's Eve would I have ever conceived that this is the year that we would have. <laughs> uh, or that I would face the challenges that I've faced this year. So... Um, we can't always choose what's going to happen, but what we can do is um, give ourselves some tools to deal with whatever does come up. <laughs> so that we can face life with creativity, we can face life with um, grace or resilience, whatever the um, circumstances. And maybe a blessing to, for us, may I be kind to myself. Something like that. May I take care of myself. Oh, and let yourself sit with this. Like, what does it feel like to bless yourself like that? <laughs> Is there pushback? Sometimes there's resistance. Like, I don't deserve that. <laughs> One of the things my mother always said when I was growing up was, don't be selfish, don't be selfish. And I still have to fight that little um, inner <laughs> criticism sometimes. She was right, but <laughs> but still, like, you know, I can be happy, but that's not selfish. And so if you have those little inner critics, just recognize that it's part, it's there. You're probably not going to unwind immediately, but acknowledging it and then blessing yourself anyway. Mm. And you're going to let yourself kind of find in your um, experience your heart center. Now it might be physically, you might feel like the front of the chest or your heart itself. The heart center um, is, uh, is both a physical place. There's uh, nerve um, ganglia that come from the brain stem, the, the vagus nerve and kind of branch out in the chest. They give us a sense of that center. So it's a physical place, but there's also a kind of energy to it, the heart chakra, which is, while not a physical place, is a way of describing what happens here. So when you feel overwhelming compassion, you feel it there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mind thing, but we feel it right there. And if you've ever looked at, you know, something that you absolutely love beyond measure, a child or even a puppy, um, <laughs> just something that has brought you just immense joy. And you know that sort of beautiful unfolding sensation there in the heart. 
to find yourself in your heart and imagine there in the center of your heart is a little tiny mustard seed <laughs> of loving kindness. Just the tiniest little orb of loving kindness. And just nurture this little orb. It might have a color in your mind. Mine is usually kind of a golden color, but it, yours might have other tone to it. And just to, as you see this little seed of loving kindness in your heart center, allow it to start to almost like warm you up. Now, if you have a trouble with orbs for whatever reason, like ball shapes don't work for you, you are welcome to use a flower or a candle flame, like pick a different image. And once you've got that there centered in your heart, we're going to see if we can grow it. So we're going to make that tiny little mustard seed sized orb into a marble. And can you feel that loving kindness just kind of grow in you? And as you get really clear and really comfortable with that sort of marble sized compassion orb, can you grow it out to the size of a walnut? Try to imagine the, the whole, like the whole experience of this loving cuts ball of loving kindness, or flower, or flame. And can you feel warmth from it? Can you feel the way it might sort of start to tinge the experience that you have with other centers in your body? Does it feel like a blessing unto itself? <laughs> We're going to try to grow our compassion a little bit bigger, like maybe the size of a tennis ball. And then now our heart center is taking a fairly good sized <laughs> amount of space there in our torso. And it's radiating. And then visualize yourself kind of expanding that uh, circumference the little orb of loving kindness out a little bigger maybe it becomes like the size of a salad plate maybe you can imagine that light and or that orb growing so that now it's the size of like a volleyball or a basketball Can you envision that orb growing out to the size of like a big gong? <laughs> so then now it grows beyond the confines of your body and out into the electromagnetic field created by your heart. Can you envision this orb of loving kindness, this circle of loving kindness expanding out again, so big that it covers all of you And then hold on to that giant orb or flame or flower of loving kindness. Bring into your mind's eye or mind or heart uh, someone that you um, see as a mentor or um, as a, a, someone you look up to, living or dead. <laughs> There's someone in your life that either taught you or you just felt unconditional love from. That's what we're going for. Someone who really meant something to you or means something to you. And then we're going to say the four blessings and then you might have an extra one too. <laughs> we're going to say those four blessings to them. So with all this loving kindness surrounding us, can we direct these blessings at this person, whether their body or their soul. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of fear. 
may you be at peace. And then if you have another blessing you want to offer them, you can offer them another blessing. And allow this kind of yourself to come back into contact with this little orb of loving kindness around you. Grow it again. Envision yourself surrounded with compassion. And now bring into your mind's eye someone that you love with all your heart. It could be more than one someone. <laughs> Just bring a, a partner or a child or a grandchild or a, a pet, like anything you love. Just love. And let yourself feel that really loving relationship filled this orb of uh, loving kindness a little bit bigger and once you're very clear you've got their image in your mind say those blessings to them again may you be happy may you be healthy may you be free of fear and may you be at peace and you can add your extra blessing if you have one. And then we're going to move into slightly more challenging territory. <laughs> we're going to keep this orb of loving kindness, this orb of compassion around us, and we're gonna think of someone who is just sort of tangential in our life, but someone that we interact with. So it could be like the person at the coffee shop that you really love, or um, your male person, just someone you know, your neighbor, but you don't really have a relationship with. So this is a neutral person. <laughs> and bring their image into your mind. And with their image in, in your mind, we're going to say those same blessings to them. So may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of fear. May you be at peace. Again, if you have any extra blessings you want to include, you can. When you're ready, you just come back to your orb of kindness, orb of compassion, flower, flame, whatever it might be, and build it again. Feel yourself you know, reignite, reconnect. Build up that compassion a little bit more because this is the more challenging one. So we're going to choose someone that we disagree with. It could be someone who's really personal. I've done this with ex-husbands. <laughs> um, it, it could be somebody we don't actually know, but that we just don't agree with. You know, a political figure, for example. It could be a neighbor or a, um, a family member that we don't um, get along with. So you're just going to pick someone that you, you know, currently like, don't necessarily get on with. And we're going to use this same loving kindness. Because ultimately, we all want the same things. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of fear. And may you be at peace. And then one more blessing if you care to. And when you're done, you come back to this orb of kindness, compassion, and love, and rebuild it. And then we're going to 
either send out the same blessing to everyone around the globe or if there's a specific kind of group of people like cancer survivors or um, a certain group of refugees, something like that, you can choose that as well. Otherwise, the whole, <laughs> all of humanity is our next uh, bless or ble uh, blessy. <laughs> so imagine in your mind, whatever that group is. Get really filled up with compassion and then send those blessings on their way. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of fear. And may you be at peace. other blessings and then let yourself return to your heart center take that big orb of compassion and just draw it back in plant it deep inside your heart that little mustard seed of love the compassion kindness <laughs> in my mind's eye I have like a little trinket jar to stick it in put it up let it sit there in my heart <laughs> so it's always protected <laughs> let yourself arrive back in this present moment back here in your environment let's see what happened so we started this meditation with clearing house and we ended this meditation with filling ourselves with these blessings and then because blessings are too big to hold, <laughs> sharing them everywhere. And maybe this is a little pattern that we go into the new year with. 